It's funny because it's like you get to know something really well and then you start to have those thoughts like, what if I did it this way? Or what if I took this route instead of this route? And listen, you're going to be wrong way more times than you're right. And that's the thing about entrepreneurship is you'll get 20 wrong ways to get five right ways, but those five right ways are going to allow you to take another step forward. Once you shifted from tradesperson, that entrepreneurial switch turned on. How long was it before that happened when you were starting to see things differently and that business side of your head started kind yeah. of ticking a little bit? It took a while because when I first entered into this industry, I was a blank canvas. I didn't know anything. And so I had to literally learn everything there was to know about what was right in front of me. And what was right in front of me was, hey, is this piece of equipment fixed or not fixed? So that's really where it started. I didn't worry worry so much about the customer aspect, the billing aspect, anything else. My main objective every single day was to fix whatever I was put in front of. And it wasn't until I got comfortable with that, that I started to branch out and sort of innovate, if you will, in my own head. I started playing around with different ideas. I'd say probably if I had to put a number on it, five years in the field, maybe six years in the field before I just started to get curious. I started to listen to that entrepreneurial spirit that I had inside of me. It's funny because because it's like you get to know something really well and then you start to have those thoughts like what if I did it this way or what if I took this route instead of this route and listen you're going to be wrong way more times than you're right and that's the thing about entrepreneurship is you'll get 20 wrong ways to get five right ways but those five right ways are going to allow you to take another step forward so it was about five years and then I'd say there was a period between five years and seven years that I really started just kind of toying around with things like hey does this work does it not work what happens if I do this? Is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? And then after about seven years or so, that's when I was like, all right, I get it. I understand it. I can be successful with this. Let's put the pedal to the metal and really see what this baby can do. During that time, was your dad also kind of parallel with you in terms of entrepreneurship? Because it seems like he had been running things for a while, a specific way, and it was working. I mean, 200,000 in revenue is nothing to look down at. That's a big accomplishment, especially by yourself. That's hard hard work hats off to him but was he watching you like make these little tweaks and being like what are you doing or was he encouraging how did it change the dynamic between you guys when that started clicking I think I got my entrepreneurial spirit from him if I'm being honest he's a hell of an entrepreneur so I think that it was exciting for him and when he moved out to Arizona and he started this business it was already late in life I mean I think he was 41 years old when he started this business so I think when I came in I came into the business at 22 years old something like that so I think that once I came in, once I started getting my arms around things, it was exciting for him because he knew that I had the time that he didn't necessarily have. He was trying to feed his family and that's great. And I'm trying to feed a thousand families. So that's my objective, which is fine. Obviously I got to feed my own too, but I think it was exciting for him when I started to really understand what it was we were doing enough to help us take that next step. And he's a humble guy. He can admit, Hey, I can't get us here, but my son can. And I love that about him because that's one of the values that he bestowed upon upon me because I've even been humbled in the growth myself and said, well, listen, I've got us to X. We got to bring somebody else that knows this aspect of the business way better than I do if we want to get the next step. I know enough about marketing to be dangerous, but that's not my background. I know enough about finances to be dangerous, but that's not my background. Let's get a director of marketing. Let's get a CFO. Let's get people around us that know how to do this stuff better than us. And that's exciting. So every time we take a step, whether it was me doing it, whether it was him doing Doing it or whether it was other people that we brought in doing it, it's always been an exciting transition. Here at Upstrap, we deal with a lot of small business owners, but on occasion, we also are able to work with business owners who are looking to scale, looking to grow. As someone who's done that successfully, where would you say most of your attention should be when you're at that point in your business, when you're like, okay, I've kind of maxed this out. I want to take it up a notch. Where's that first place that you would hone in on? Is it systems? Is it hiring sales? Where would you focus when you're ready to kind of start scaling a business, it's specifically a service-based business? Because there's a lot of moving parts. It's not an e-commerce store. You're not just... <laughs> 
yeah. cranking out thumbnails every day. There's so many things moving. What kind of advice would you give someone in that position? If you're in a service-based business and you're at the point where maybe it's just one or two of you and you're looking to take the next step, if it were me, I would focus on customers first and not necessarily bringing in somebody for sales or anything of that nature. Just how can you accumulate more customers and more work? For us, that was door to door. For us, that was going into a restaurant, recognizing that we didn't take care of the restaurant right next door and going over there when the job was done saying, hey, by the way, I just helped your neighbor over here. Is there anything that you need me to look at while I'm here? Build those relationships. And that's the beauty about service-based businesses is that there's a big relationship aspect. I'm only speaking really commercially. I can't speak to the residential sector too much. We haven't done anything really in that. It's all commercial for us, but there's a big relationship aspect there. Once you get, and this is the way I've always worked, once you get so inundated with work that you can no longer keep up when you're working 18 hour days and you only get six hours of sleep a night, you get up and do it all over again. And literally that's your life. You do that until you can't anymore and you know it's time to bring somebody else on. And then you do it and it's gotta be the right person because the philosophy that I've always followed is that, hey, they're gonna do it now until they're working 17 hours a day. And you bring on somebody else and you got three people, you guys are working 16 hours a day, you bring somebody else. You do that until you're all working an eight to 10 hour shift and you have enough work and you have enough people to support that work. And then now you're off to the races. To break it down, heavy customer acquisition and then slowly one person at a time building your team up. Yeah, that's the way that's, to do it. I can't speak yeah. for everybody. I'm sure that there's a million ways to skin a cat, but that's what we did. And it got us off the ground floor and onto the first floor.